Hi all. The great Mark Esman has informed me he has played Leela in a critical variation against the Chicago variation. Uh, so let's see, this was Mark Esman against eight Tesla V100s played on Lee Chass. And Leela is forced to take the black side from a certain point. So accepting this gambit. And we go into this critical line with knight e6. So I believe it's around here that Leela takes over from this start position. So accepting the p sacrifice, bishop b6, bishop e7, and now we have rook c1. And in this position, we've seen the devastation that occurred after castling in the previous video on the channel. You might want to check that out. Leela finds an incredibly resourceful move, which is actually mentioned in Mark Esselman's book, Mayhem in the Mora, which, by the way, is this course code. You want to, might want to check out that is the short URL there, that bit.ly link, if you want to check that out. He does mention this in his analysis, this resource, which Leela uses in this position. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you five seconds to pause the video. So black to play. Okay, a remarkable queen sacrifice. Rook takes c3, trying to get as much as possible for the queen here. So as we saw, just to recap, on castling, it's a disaster for black because the bishop takes knight d5, knight takes e7 check, and rook c7, uh, which leads to e7 being devastating for black, as we saw in the previous video. So in this game, Leela sacrifices the queen, a recommendation which is in the Mayhem in the Mora book. We have now bishop takes d8, rook takes, queen takes, king takes d8 is played by Leela. On bishop takes d8, this does allow the powerful bishop, queen, sorry, queen g5, putting a lot of pressure on the black position. So if black plays rook g8 here, then there's e7, that bishop's hitting the rook, that's nasty. And if black plays bishop takes e4, then queen takes g7, and the queen going over here to terrorize the queen side is a good idea to pick up an important pawn over there with a big advantage. So uh, king takes d8 was chosen by Leela. We have queen e3, a very powerful move on those dark squares. With the bishop on e7 hemmed in at the moment, a little bit unhelpful for b6. We see knight c6. Uh, here on king e8, the invasion queen b6 is really annoying. It just wins material, basically. So uh, knight c6, we see rook c1, big threats here, knight d4 was played. If the king steps onto this nasty pin, white can celebrate the pin with bishop d5, and in fact get another major pin with queen a7. Now with a huge threat, I wonder if you can guess, uh, if say bishop d8, can you see what white plays? Okay, bang, rook takes c6 is checkmate. And on king d8 here, then just picking up material. So knight d4 was tried by Leela. We have queen e1, king e8. If the knight tries to contain the queen, as far as a5 is concerned, then it runs into bishop d5. So the queen will get her way, as Mark Espen writes in the book. So uh, e takes. Uh, for example, and then the queen gets into a5 and it's devastation after queen c7. This check, and then this is actually crushing completely. So, uh, here in this line, by the way, on king c7, uh, then taking and queen c3 is crushing. There's no defense of c6 available for black. Uh, so, after queen e1, king e8. Rook c7, bishop c6. And now here, uh, Esmond played this in a rapid time control and played actually queen a5, which might only lead to a fortress as this game continuation uh, shows. This is a really, really critical position. Uh, in this position, black is in big 
trouble. Uh, queen b4 might be the most precise move, and black's in a kind of uh, advanced zugzwang type position. Uh, for example, if the king moves here, now queen a5 is much more effective because on bishop d8 there's rook f7 check. So this highly nuanced queen b4 really uh, gives white a dominating position, for example, like this is absolutely winning. Uh, or if uh, bishop takes d5 here, then rook f8 check is a forced chatmate sequence like this. Look at all these spectator pieces. Pieces are ridiculous for black. Uh, so, uh, so just to recap here. So queen b4. This is a very nuanced continuation. On bishop d8 here. Rook f7 check. So what does black do if bishop e8? Queen takes a6. And black's pieces are suffering major congestion in this variation. If the knight has to go back like this, the pieces are being put back in their box, and this would be highly unpleasant. Now, this diagonal is important for celebrating the e8 uh, being pinned, and it's very, very troublesome. For example, bishop c6. This position is extremely troublesome. Troublesome. White can actually just play calmly and pick up this pawn to generate two connected. Pass pawns on the queen side with a very big advantage. In this line, instead of bishop e8, if we choose h5 instead, then taking off this pawn and queen b7 uh, leads much to the same sort of disaster scenario where the black's queen side is evaporating again. Uh, so, yeah, this does seem to be uh, a very promising position indeed after queen b4. However, in this rapid Game example, queen a5 was played. We have bishop d8. And now e7 liberates this bishop at the cost of a pawn, okay, and sacrificing the exchange. But uh, after knight takes, queen takes c6, a takes b4, queen takes a6, knight d7, queen c4, rook b8, Leela, master of positional play has seemingly set up a fortress style position and the operator I believe resigned it on black's behalf now but it is a bit fortressy fortressy here uh, to be sure uh, it's going to be very very difficult not to crack uh, this position uh, for example knight c5 is a great blockade white could try queen e2 and instead of black being greedy black can keep solid here it seems uh, with <laughs> very big challenges to sort out. However, that doesn't mean that the line is uh, that bad at all, especially after Queen B4. This improvement here, critical improvement, seems on detailed analysis uh, to leave Black really struggling. So the whole thing is, uh, on current analysis, a very, very sound, promising line against the Chicago with this Knight E6 powerful peace sacrifice setting the scene spectacularly. So this immortal game example is pretty justified. Uh, so you might want to check out again on Chessable all the analysis of this key game and the Rook takes C3 is included in the Mayhem and the Mora. Fantastically researched book. Over 200 pages includes this analysis which enabled Esmond, uh, to you know to test that line. Leela finds the amazing Queen sacrifice. But uh, yeah, it's all in there if you want to check that out as well. Okay. Thanks very much.